Chapter 14, Part 2. Conditions Necessary for Effective Steam Sterilization. Regardless of the type of steam sterilization method used, the same four conditions, contact, temperature, time, and moisture, must be met. Contact. The most common reason for sterilization failure is the lack of contact between steam and the entire surface of the device being sterilized. This failure may be related to human error or mechanical malfunction. Frequent causes of steam contact failure include failure to adequately clean the object being sterilized, any coating of soil such as protein or oils can protect the microorganisms from direct steam contact. Sets that are too dense or instruments positioned in a way that does not allow steam contact. Packages wrapped too tightly. If packages are wrapped too tightly, air becomes trapped and cannot escape. Loads that are too crowded, packs must be arranged with adequate spacing on the cart. If they are packed too tightly, air may be entrapped and steam may not be able to penetrate into all areas. Containers that are positioned incorrectly Basins and other items that hold, can hold water must be positioned so air can be removed and water, condensed, ski, condensed steam, can escape. When sterilizing bottles or other airtight containers, tops must be removed. Also, clogged drain strainer. Most sterilizers have a small drain strainer at the bottom of the chamber to keep lint, tape, and other small objects from entering the exhaust line. Mechanical malfunctions. Defective steam, traps, clogs, exhaust lines, and similar, and similar mechanical malfunctions can occur and cannot be repaired by a CS technician. A qualified service representative should be called to perform the necessary maintenance. Utility malfunctions. Boiler or steam delivery system problems can occur and a qualified service representative is needed to make repairs, as specified in the sterilizer's manufacturer's service manual. While mechanical malfunctions can occur, many sterilization failures are caused by human error and can be prevented by good work practices. Figure 1418 shows you at the bottom of the page a gravity air displacement chart. It shows you the different items and the various exposure times for that item, that item at different temperatures. We won't read that, but it, can be, it will be explained. Temperature. To be effective, steam sterilization must occur at spe specific temperatures. These temperatures are needed to kill heat-resistant bacteria. The two most commonly encountered temperatures for steam sterilization are gravity sterilization at 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius and dynamic air removal at 270 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit or 132.2 to 134 degrees Celsius. Time. The steam sterilization process can only be effective if all items within the load are exposed to the evaluated temperatures and steam contact moisture for an adequate amount of time. Inadequate sterilization exposure times can lead to failure of the sterilization process. And also on page 313, there is another chart called dynamic air removal with the items and different exposure times to based on temperature. Time, which is what is explained in both of these charts. The steam sterilization process can only be effective if all items in the load are exposed. So in figure 1418 and 1419, they show the time and temperature relationships. This data represents the minimum sterilization cycles identified by the Association for the Advancement of Medical Instrumentation, or AAMI, or AMI. Moisture. <clears throat> Dry, saturated steam is required for effective steam sterilization. Saturated steam acts similar to fog because it holds many tiny water droplets in suspension. The moisture content of saturated steam should possess a relatively a relative humidity, RH, of 97% to 100%. In other words, 
Steam ideally should consist by weight of two or three parts of saturated water and 97 to 98, 98 parts of dry saturated steam. Saturated steam is similar to air with 100% relative humidity. When saturated steam cools, water condenses as a liquid. The pressure exerted by saturated steam is constant for a given temperature and the pressure varies in direct proportion to that of that temperature. In other words, the higher the temperature, the higher the pressure. To increase steam temperature, pressure must be increased. To decrease the steam temperature, pressure must be decreased. Definition, saturated steam. Saturated steam is steam that contains the maximum amount of vapor water. The atmospheric room pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch or PSI at room temperature. While the pressure gauges on, on sterilizers at sea level are set at zero, in reality, the pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch. After the sterilizer's door is closed and the sterilization cycle begins, steam is injected into the chamber. Then, the temperature rises, as does the pressure in the compartment. Figure 14.20 shows the temperature and pressure relationship. One of the concerns with steam sterilization is the superheated or dry steam. Superheated steam reaches high temperatures, higher temperatures than saturated steam and due to a lack of moisture. It is a poor sterilant. If the steam is not saturated, less than 97 to 100% relative humidity, the following two problems can develop, either or both of which will interfere with the effectiveness of sterilization. Items in the sterilizer will remain dry and microorganisms cannot be killed as readily as when in wet conditions. Items in the sterilizer will remain cool much longer, especially if they are wrapped. To understand this, think about baking a turkey in an oven with dry heat. It may take hours for the center of the turkey to become cooked compared to one placed in a pressure cooker with saturated steam. Saturated steam is much better carrier of thermal energy than dry air. Basic work practice for steam sterilization. Medical devices must be properly prepared before sterilization to ensure steam will come in contact with all, air, all surfaces. This section provides sterilization preparation guidance for processing some common medical devices. <clears throat> Preparing devices and packs for steam sterilization. As noted earlier, all devices should be thoroughly cleaned before sterilization. Effective sterilization requires that sterilizing agent be in contact with all surfaces for the prescribed time. Air removal, Steam penetration and condescent drainage are enhanced by proper positioning and by the use of a perforated or mesh bottom trays or baskets. In figure 1421, in figure 1421, it illustrates a mesh bottom tray. Instrument sets should be prepared in trays large enough to equally distribute the mass and the configuration of instrument sets should be evaluated to help ensure they remain dry. No, oils, powders, cork, and wood cannot be steam sterilized. Loading a steam sterilizer. To ensure, ensure full steam contact and, and removal of air, the sterilizer must be properly loaded to allow adequate circulation and drainage of the condensate. Basic procedures for loading a sterilizer include, allow for proper steam penetration and avoid overloading. Packages must be placed for efficient air removal, steam penetration and evacuation. If a shelf liner is used, it should only be made of, of absorbent material. See figure 14.22. Solid containers must be positioned so air can exit and steam can enter. There should be visible space between packs to allow steam circulation and drying. 
When combining loads, place hard goods on the bottom to prevent condensation from dripping onto the lower packs. Packages must not touch the chamber walls. Basin sets should stand on edge. They should be tilted for drainage, so if water is present, it will run out. See figure 14.23. 14.23 uses an unwrapped basin to illustrate how basins should be positioned for adequate drainage. Position textile packs so the layers within them are perpendicular to the shelf. Figure 14.24 uses two unwrapped towel packs to illustrate how they should be placed on the sterilization rack to facilitate the sterilization process. Stand paper, plastic peel pouches on edge using a basket or rack. Placing them plastic side down may cause moisture to remain inside and placing them plastic side up may cause water to stand on top of the plastic. Place them so the sterilization pouches are placed paper to plastic for air steam circulation. When possible, sterilize textiles and hard goods in separate loads. If this is not possible, textiles should be placed on top shelves with hard goods below to avoid condensation runoff from the hard goods onto the textiles below. Surgical instrument trays with perforated bottoms should sit flat on the shelf to maintain even instrument distribution and to facilitate proper drainage. Standing these instrument sets on their edge permits moisture to collect at the standing edge. See figure 14.25, which uses an unwrapped perforated instrument tray to illustrate how perforated instruments should be placed sterilizer rack. Unloading a steam sterilizer. When sterilization is complete, follow the sterilizer's instructions for use for opening the door. When the cart is removed, it should be placed in a low traffic area where there are no air conditioning or other cold air vents in close proximity. For sterilizers without carts, items should remain in the sterilizer chamber until properly cooled. The cooling time may only be 30 minutes for small sets or peel pouches, but can take two hours or longer for large sets. The cooling time must account for critical factors such as the type of sterilizer used, the design of the device, and the packaging steril being sterilized, and the temperatures and humidity of the room. The packages may still contain some steam vapor. If packages are touched at a point, the vapor present might carry microorganisms from one hand through the packaging material and contaminate the item. The load contents should be visible free of any liquid. Water droplets on the outside of packages or on the rails of carts are a signal that every item in the load should be visibly inspected. Caution, do not touch items during visual inspection. Wet items should be considered contaminated even if they have not been touched. To unload sterile items, do not unload packages before they are cool. Placing hot or warm packages on cold surfaces will cause condensation to occur beneath and or between them. If warm packages are placed in plastic dust covers, condensate will be trapped until open and the moisture may damage items protected by the dust cover. And handle the sterile packages as little as possible. Items should not be moved or touched until they have cooled the room to room temperature. Controlling wet packs. Wet packs may occur when a steam sterilizer process is used. Packages are considered wet when moisture in the form of damp dampness, droplets, or puddles of water are found on or within packages after a completed sterilization cycle. Moisture can create a pathway for microorganisms to travel from the outside to the inside of the package. Figure 2.6 provides an example of condensation wet wetness on the outside of the tray. Figure 14.27 provides an example of moisture on the inside of the tray. If moisture is present on or in one of the packs, the problem may be isolated to that one set. To ensure the problem is isolated to only one pack, other packs in the load may be open to check for moisture. If there are several wet packs from one load, the entire load should be considered wet. Wet packs cannot be released and should be reported 
for immediate follow-up. A wet pack is considered contaminated and must be completely repackaged and reprocessed. When doing so, all textiles should, textiles should be re-laundered and process indicators in the tray or packs must be replaced. Wet pack documentation. All wet packs should be documented. Because of the complexity of the issue, finding the cause and cure of a wet pack and or wet loads can be difficult as there are many factors to take into consideration. Investigation is a multiple step process. Documenting wet packs occurs, occurrences may identify a pattern that can pinpoint the root cause. For example, documentation may show that the only plastic instrument sets, specialty devices, and packages prepared by another department or processed by a specific CS technician are involved. It may also show a pattern of steam usage within the facility or changes in steam quality during a certain time of year. Identifying the, most, identifying the root cause of the wet packs is crucial to preventing additional wet packs. External moisture on packs is usually noticed immediately when the packs are removed from the sterilizer. Internal wetness will not be noticed until the packs are opened for use unless the moisture wicks through the wrap. See figure 14.28. Causes for wet packs. Primary causes of wet packs arising from CS preparation techniques include Packs that are, were properly prepared, in, packs that were improperly prepared or loaded incorrectly for sterilization. This is the most frequent cause of wet packs. Heavy or dense instrument sets. Not using absorbent material to wick moisture between heavy metals such as basin sets. Textile packs wrapped too tightly improperly prepared items such as items wrapped while moist. Metal items positioned in a way that allows water to pool or trap steam. Instrument and basin sets that are too dense or overloaded. Linen packs wrapped too tightly causing them to retain moisture. Improper placement of concave items such as medicine cups in a position that does not allow for drainage and not using the correct filters or incorrect filter placement on a container. Another reason for wet packs may be the sterilizer itself. Listed below are two of the most common reasons that can be identified by a CS technician. Gasket is not completely intact or clogged chamber drain strainer. Other causes of wet packs can only be identified and resolved by a qualified sterilizer service technician. Such causes may include broken valves, malfunctioning steam traps or drain check valves, faulty sterilizer gauges or controllers, clogged drain line, faulty drain valves. Wet packs may be caused for reasons occurring outside of CS. As previously stated, these reasons can be attributed to the boiler or steam delivery system. Although CS does not control these factors, it is important to be aware of some of the factors from outside CS that can contribute to wet packs, including steam quality that does not meet the requirements of the sterilizer, blocked steam lines, Boiler feed water that contains too many non-condensable gases, including air. Boiler not properly maintained. Malfunctioning steam traps or check valves. Poorly engineered steam piping. Increased demands for steam supply. Wet packs can also be caused by environmental factors such as removing a hot load and placing it in an air conditioned area or an area with humidity exceeding 70%. Extended sterilization cycles. Healthcare facilities typically use standard cycles for a majority of items processed. However, medical instrumentation manufacturers are now incorporating complex designs and materials into their devices. They may provide written processing instructions that lengthen the exposure time of the steam sterilization cycle. This is referred to as extended cycles. 
CS technicians must obtain review and consistently follow the manufacturer's written re recommendations for all of the medical devices they process, including medical devices purchased, consigned, or loaned to the facility. Most medical devices require standard, standard cycle times. Damage to some items can occur if items requiring standard sterilizing times are processed with other devices that require an extended cycle. For that reason, extended cycle items should not only be sterilized with items that require a different cycle time, items should never be sterilized in any of the cycle that deviates from specific manufacturer's instructions. Cleaning and maintaining sterilizers. The sterilizer's manufacturer's written recommendations for sterilizer maintenance must always be followed. The following general cleaning and maintenance guidelines are illustra illustrated by manufacturer's recommendations. Cool the chamber before performing any cleaning or maintenance procedures. The chamber drain strainer should be removed at least daily and cleaned thoroughly under running water using a non-abrasive brush and mild detergent. This procedure may be needed more frequently depending upon the types of loads processed. If debris is allowed to build up, it may be necessary to soak the strainer before cleaning. See figure 14.29, which shows an improperly maintained strainer that is clogged and will not allow proper air removal. Also, the inside of the chamber should be cleaned according to the manufacturer's instructions. Problems with residue buildup on the chamber's interior can affect the cycle's drying ability. Residues in the chamber can leave deposits on instruments and wrappers. Figure 14.30 illustrates residue buildup in a sterilizer chamber. Clean with non-abrasive, non-linting products. Rinse detergent and residue from the chamber thoroughly to avoid deposits and devices during sterilization. Also, the door gasket should be inspected and wiped clean daily for a clean, damp, not with a clean, damp, non-linting cloth. During inspection, look for defects or signs of wear or deterioration, especially if the unit has, has a vacuum cycle, meaning look for gasket um, problems with the gasket on the door. Also, carriages, carts, and loading baskets should be routinely cleaned with a mild solution. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for use for cleaning and lubrication requirements. Carriages, carts, and loading baskets should be checked to ensure they are not damaged and can move freely in and out of the sterilizer chamber. Follow the manufacturer's instructions about the need and method for cleaning and flushing the chamber's drain. Air and steam will not pass efficiently if the drain line is blocked. Strong abrasives or steel wool should never be used on the sterilizer because they can scratch the surface and encourage corrosion. While sterilizers chambers are made of corrosion resistant materials, some steam boiler water treatment chemicals can penetrate the chamber if the surface is damaged. Chambers that have been, not been properly maintained may require professional cleaning. Finally, inspect the recording devices daily, including paper charts and printer paper. Sterilization quality control. Sterilization quality control is an essential part of the sterilization process. Because it is difficult to prove an item's sterility without contaminating it, conditions that indicate sterilization parameters were not met must be monitored. Sterilization monitoring is addressed in Chapter 17. Conclusion. Central service professionals who understand the steam sterilization process reduce the risk of sterilization failure. Knowing when there are, may be an, an issue with a steam cycle may allow the load contents to be reviewed and, if necessary, reprocessed before the items are distributed or used on a patient. Terms to remember. Bio burden. Saturated steam. End of chapter 14.